Hey, it's Dave with House Flipping Spreadsheet, and this is a quick tutorial on how to use our new rental calculator to analyze rental deals and burr deals. So I'm on the analyze workflow. You can find the rental calculator in the alternative exit strategy section down here in the bottom left hand corner. If you click on a rental calculator, that's going to take you to our new rental calculator tool. So it looks like a traditional cash flow spreadsheet where you're inputting your rental income, your operating expenses, your long-term financing, and then it's going to calculate your, your, your cash flow, your equity, and your total return for you. So the first step before you go through the cash flow analysis is going to be to analyze your rental purchase. So when you're analyzing your rental purchase, you're really trying to determine how much profit or equity you can build into the deal. So if you're buying a distressed property, you're rehabbing it, you're trying to add value on the front end, and so that's really what this first analysis is all about is determining how much profit you can build into the deal by buying a distressed property and rehabbing it and increasing the property value so it's really kind of a rehab analysis so the first option that you need to put in here is your after repair value so what do you think the property is going to be worth after you rehab it so let's just plug in hundred seventy thousand seventy five thousand dollars for this property and let's say that we think we can purchase it for around a hundred thousand dollars or maybe the sellers listed it for a hundred thousand dollars so I'm gonna plug that in there um, and then it's gonna automatically calculate your buying cost for you so right now we're doing a percent of purchase you can also change that to lump sum if you just want to input a lump sum value there but two percent of a hundred thousand dollars is two thousand dollars so we've got a hundred and two thousand dollars for our purchase and buying costs. Next we need to think about how much we're going to spend on rehabbing the property. So we've got an option for a dollar per square foot or you can just input a lump sum value or you can use the detailed option which pulls in the detailed repair cost information from our detailed repair cost estimator. So I'm just going to use the dollar per square foot amount and I'm just going to use maybe an average grade rental grade remodel for 1500 square feet so 1500 times $30 a square foot is $45,000 for this remodel. Next is you're going to be your holding cost during the rehab so uh, these are going to be your property taxes, utilities, insurance so I'm thinking it's going to take around two months to do this rehab. Our property taxes are around $2,000 so I'm just going to plug in a formula there to figure out what that is so that's $167 a month maybe $250 a month in utilities, maybe $125 a month in insurance. Uh, maintenance is really more for like lawn mowing or snow removal, so I'll just plug in a value there as well. And then, you, then so you can see, uh, we've got about $622 a month times two months is $1,200 in total holding costs during our rehab. And then the next section is selling costs. So. Uh, cost to sell the property. I've got that plugged in as a percentage of the ARV, but again, you can change that to just a lump sum value. So 7% times 175 is equal to $12,250. So how, how are you going to fund the deal is the next question. So that's the final thing that you need to sign, uh, set up on this uh, purchase analysis is how you're going to fund it. If you're just going to be funding it with your own cash, so maybe it's just a cash purchase, then you can just leave it as cash purchase. Otherwise, if you're going to be getting outside funding, that'll give you some additional options here for how you're going to fund the flip. So uh, long-term conventional financing. So that would be if you're just getting a long-term conventional loan up front and it's going to fund the entire purchase or rehab of the property. And then you're going to keep that loan for the entire rental holding period. Now, if you're using a bridge loan, that's essentially just going to be a short-term loan that finances the initial purchase and rehab of the, the project. Um, and then you'll end up getting that refinanced maybe 6 to 12 months down the road. So if you, if you do the long-term conventional loan, you can actually set that up later on. If you are going to be using a bridge loan, then you can set up that short-term financing and bridge loan directly on this page. But I'm just going to use a long-term conventional loan. Uh, which we'll set up here shortly. So now you can see our rehab profit calculation. So this is the calculation that's used to determine how much value we added by buying a distressed property, rehabbing it, and increasing the property value in the deal. So 
So now you can see we've got our after repair value. We think we can increase the property value to $175,000 minus our purchase costs of 102 minus our repair costs of 45 and our holding costs of $1,200 and our selling costs. So we've got essentially $14,500 in equity that we're building into this deal. So we've got a decent chunk of equity um, that we're building into this deal up front. Now we need to go uh, calculate our long-term rental cash flow to see how the property performs over the long term. So if we go back here to the rental analysis, this is where you can set up your revenues, operating expenses, and long-term financing for the deal. So first you'll see that we've got multiple units here. So if you are going to be uh, buying a multifamily property up to five units, so maybe a duplex, quadplex, or a fiveplex, you can analyze a small multifamily property as well. Or if you're just using a buying a single family property, you could just plug in that amount here as well. So we're going to say that we're going to be able to bring in $1,200 a month in rent. You can calculate this on a monthly basis or a, an annual basis if you want, but then it forecasts it out on a yearly basis for you over here on the right hand side. So you can also uh, make some assumptions here for increases in rental income over time. Um, so you can see how that forecasts that out as well. And then you can make some assumptions for vacancy loss. So maybe you're assuming you're going to have one month every single year of vacancy loss to get a new tenant into your property. So that's what I'm going to plug in there. And then next you can you can plug in your operating expenses. So plug in your property taxes, your property insurance, um, any kind of other uh, maintenance utilities. So in this, this scenario, I'm assuming that the uh, tenant themselves are going to be paying all of the utilities on the property. But then you can get down here to the bottom. This is where uh, we're going to have a property manager managing the property. So you can change this to maybe you're paying them on a monthly basis or a yearly basis or you can pay them as a percentage of the gross scheduled income or the gross operating income. So I'm just going to plug in 10% of the gross scheduled income for the property management. And then I'm going to do the same thing for repairs and CapEx. So repairs would be for um, small repairs to the property, maybe uh, dishwasher breaks and you have to go and repair that. So that's just kind of building in a budget or contingency into your, your analysis to cover that. So it looks like we've got around $120 a month in repairs and then another, you know, which ends up being about $1,400 a year for just miscellaneous repairs. And then I'm doing the same thing for CapEx. So basically CapEx is building in uh, capital uh, improvement reserve into your analysis. So you're basically uh, going to use that CapEx reserve to fix major improvements to the property, such as roofs, uh, your windows, foundations, maybe painting um, the exterior of the property, or replacing siding, stuff like that. So again, that's just kind of creating a budget in the deal uh, for the ongoing repairs and capital improvements that you're going to have to make to the property over time. So then your net operating income basically takes your gross operating income, deducts out your operating expenses to calculate what your net operating income is going to be for this property. Now you can set up your long term financing. So you'll see over here on the left hand side, we have a little setup tab. If you click on the setup tab, that's going to pull up your long term financing setup page. So you've got a little drop down menu here. You can set up uh, how you're going to fund the, the loan here. So we've got some different loan values. So the ARV, that's going to use the loan value from what you set up as the initial after repair value on the property. Uh, purchase and repairs. So purchase, that's going to be the purchase amount that you established. Or purchase and repairs, that's the purchase plus the repairs amount. So right now we've got it set up at $175,000, which is the after repair value. But let's say that our lender is going to lend um, at 70% of the after repair value. So that's where you can plug in this loan to value ratio here. So 175,000 times 70%. So we've actually got a loan to value reduction of $52,000. So our long term loan that our lender is going to provide for us is going to be $122,000. So again, that's 
70% of $175,000 is $122,000. So now you can set up your loan terms for the loan. So you can set it up as an amortized loan or an interest only loan. I would imagine it's probably going to be an amortized long term loan for you. So we're going to set it up as a 30 year loan at a 5% interest rate. And then you can also set up any kind of additional points or fees that your lender is going to charge up front for originating the loan. So let's just say 2%. Now that we've set that up, um, you can see what your initial cash outlay is going to be. So your total project costs for the project are going to be $148,000. So that's going to be your purchase amount plus your repairs, plus your buying costs, plus your holding costs. Your lender is only going to give you $122,000. So you're going to have to bring $25,000 to the table to fund some of those uh, repair costs or buying costs and holding costs on the project. Um, so that's how you can set up the long term financing. If we go back, we will see what our long term financing monthly payments are going to be and annual payments are going to be. So uh, you can see our mortgage payment is going to be $658 a month. In the first year, $507 of that is going to be going toward the interest. And then our principal amount is going to be $151 a month. So you can see on an annual basis, that's $6,000 in interest, $1,800 in principal. And then you can see our total financing amount here is $7,891. So on this property, our net income is only $6,700, but our financing amount is $7,800. So our net cash flow on this deal is actually going to be negative by, you know, $1,000 or more. And then this is where that cash remaining in the deal uh, feeds over. So if you remember, we had $28,000 of our own cash that's going to be invested in this deal. So that's where this value is feeding over to. So you can see we've got $28,000 in the deal and this and now we can see where uh, the other results such as what the property value is going to be, what the cash flow is going to be, what your equity earned is going to be and what your total return is going to be. Um, so the property value in the first year when you initially uh, rehab the property and, and increase the property value, it's going to be $175,000. At the end of the first year, if the property appreciates at 2.5%, it's going to be worth $179,000. In the second year, $183,000. So you can see how your property value is increasing. And then down here, um, the property appreciation is calculated as a part of your equity earning on the project. So our cash flow, if we didn't have a loan on this project, we'd be making $6,700 a year in cash flow, positive cash flow. But since we do have a long-term loan on this deal, we're actually going to be losing around $1,100 on an annual basis. So this, this property actually is not providing positive cash flow. Um, so if you're looking for a positive cash flow on your rental property, then this may not be a good deal for you. If you're looking for more of an appreciation from an equity standpoint, then that's where this kind of comes into play down below. So you can see we've got our initial equity that we built into the deal from the purchase and the rehab. So again, that's from that initial analysis. If we go back up to the top, we've got $1,400 in initial equity that we built into the deal by buying a distressed property and renovating it and increasing the property value. So that's where that comes into play. And then you've got your equity earned from paying down the principal. So if we go back up to our long term financing, we're paying down the principal on the loan of $1,800. So that's your equity earned from paying down the principal. And then we have equity that we're earning from the property appreciating. So all in all, in that first year, we're actually generating around $20,000 in equity. And then in the second year, we're going to be generating $1,900 in, in equity from paying down the principal, and then another $4,800 from the property appreciating in value. So although this property is cash flowing a negative, you know, $100 a month or whatever it is, $93 a month, it is going to be able to generate some decent equity on the front end. And then over time, you're going to be paying down that principal. And if, if the, if property values continue to appreciate, then you could assume that your property is going to provide some appreciation equity as well. 
And then so you've got your total your total return, which basically takes into account your cash flow and your equity. So right now in the first year, our total return is our uh, cash flow plus our equity. So we've actually got negative cash flow plus our equity. So we've got $19,000 in cash flow. In the second year, um, our total return is going to be $5,000. So most of that is going to be again from our equity, from paying down our principal and the property appreciating. And then you can just see how it continues to bring in uh, positive equity for you. Um, this is the total return that is accrued over time. So, so in the first year, we've generated a total return of $19,000. By the second year, our total return is 24,000. So that's just 19,000 from the first year plus our five from the second year. So we've generated a total return of $25,000 by the second year, another $30,000 by the third year. So you can start to see what your overall return is on an accrued basis as well. So that's, that's a uh, quick overview of the rental analysis. So you can kind of see how the tool can be used to get an overall picture of the profit and equity that you can build into a deal up front. But then you can also analyze your cash flow to see what your monthly and annual cash flow is going to be. And then also see how the other equity um, can play into the deal as well from paying down the principal from the property appreciating as well. Now all of this information feeds over to your rental reports here. So you've got a rental cash flow report and this basically just summarizes your analysis. So it shows you your purchase analysis um, performance, but then it also shows the long-term uh, rental performance uh, on a yearly basis in the first year, but then it also shows you the entire cash flow over the entire holding period. So again, that's a quick overview of the rental calculator. If you have any other questions or anything, please let me know. Thanks. Bye.